Hello everybody, this is Schrodinger Cat, and this is how you make a maximum offset shape using the new primaries. Um, it's a way basically to make a shape that sits completely in the other voxel selection box, and that allows you to do some really cool stuff. So first we're going to put down the slope, it's called the slope corner inside. since they're kind of a pain to work with, and especially since I know uh, using Rotate is not a good option for somebody who's not using European, is not using US keyboard. Uh, what I do is I tend to copy it. Mirror. So I've always got the inside corner. See how it's got this kind of like slant here? You want that to be facing the inside at all times. So this actually is the bottom that I've done right here. And we're just going to put it in all four corners and then we're going to stick putty in the middle of it to take the air that is between these shapes and make it into a new voxel. And this is going to create a voxel that is three voxels in length. Before we could not do that. We could only make a voxel that was one and a half at most in size to a regular voxel. So there I've got my slope. Once again that's the slope corner inside and you want the slope corner that is the inside to always be facing inward and you can see it now. Okay so I'm going to put putty in the middle and I missed lining it up. So let's try that again. I'm going to probably tweak it in because it's a little hard to see out here in the ocean. I need to move my claim really bad. Okay, there we go. This is a voxel that is... Let me color it so it's not blinding. It is three voxels in length. But when you go to copy it, It's just one voxel. Sorry for the camera changing the color there. Uh, even though it's a really long voxel, it doesn't act like your typical stretched out voxel. So if I stuck it in the ground, you know, it the game kind of ignores everything past that one and a half point. So there I've, I've stuck it further in the ground, as you can see the two of them. When it gets to that one and a half point, then it starts to distort. But everything before that, it does not. And just to give credit where credit is due, this shape was hunted for by Birch Star, who said, you know, what if we had a shape that would let it distort past that point? And she found it in the line tool in a big line that she made in her workshop. And I said, you know, that looks a whole lot like the primary shape they just gave us. So let's see if that works. And it did. So. Sorry for that stupid blue camera. Okay, so now to get the shape that we want of this, to get an, a cube, it's going to be totally offset. First we're going to do a couple things. I've taken a regular voxel and let me paint a different color so they stand out. And then we can see what's happened to it. I'm going to take my, my voxel, my three link voxel. We're, we're going to have to invent new words to describe this stuff because they genuinely do take a warning label so you know what you're messing with is not a regular voxel in some way. And I do not want to be the person who comes up with those words, so I hope somebody good at it does. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to line it up so it is parallel to the ground and really it doesn't matter where you do it, you just kind of put it on one side or the other of this voxel, uh, kind of embed it into it. See how I just pasted it over it like that? Let me repeat it. 
See, that doesn't do anything. But if I impress it so they're overlapping, what I did was I collapsed that one voxel. And you can do it from either side. It doesn't matter. So now it looks like I've got, you know, a two-sided, like two different colors in my voxel. Hey, Clarity. So I can take this, and this shape is a voxel that is completely offset, meaning it sits completely in one side of the selection box. Um, that leads to a lot of different things that we can do. So the first thing we can do is we can just take that shape, and it's not going to be exceptional looking, because you know I could do this with the paint tool, but I can just take this shape, and since it's offset completely, I can just put it flat on the ground, even though it's completely thin, because as the game sees it, it's voxel sized, and it's in this voxel selection box here, right? So this is actually sitting flat on the ground, even though it's flat. Now if I did it on the other offset, and I mirrored it up on green, and then put it like so as you can see I'm having to mirror it to keep it in the voxel selection box and touching the ground. If I if I mirror it and I don't move it down to the ground, it's gonna pull up by a full voxel length. Let's pull the ground an entire voxel box. So, okay, so we want that to be smaller, right? So let's let's do that, but let's also make a voxel that is full voxel sized and completely offset, because that lets you do things like make circles that are completely offset, which lets you embed circles within other circles and stack circles within other circles and make circles that are inside out. So that sounds kind of mind bendy but it all starts off of making a voxel that is totally offset. So what I have to do is I have to mirror on one axis and then I'm going to paste. And this is just going to stretch the voxel from one side to the other. And let me paint so you can see Let me try that one more time. These are tricky to line up because your selection box is actually sitting on outside of where you think the voxel would be. So I've got a voxel here that I just painted. Let me rotate this whole thing. Now you can't see. There, now you can see it better. I've got that voxel that I just painted slate right here. That's the one I stretched out. That was my first voxel that was offset and flattened. And this wood one here is the one I just showed you how to make. This guy here. That you get by flattening a regular voxel with this. So this one I made here, this one I'm slate, is not totally offset because I messed up. But I just woke up and I've got to get my notes on how to make that one. But it's an operation of combining these two voxels. And once I figure it out, I will get the trick. But I'm going to show you how to make the... Uh, maybe that was it. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Let me repeat that so I can see what I did. Okay, so I took the flattened voxel here. And I pasted it next to itself in the direction it's offset. Which stretched it out and made a solid voxel that is also completely offset. And that lets you make um, all kinds of goofy stuff, like I said.
And it's literally really, really hard to mess with these because your selection box is not where you think it is. Like, I have my selection box in the regular voxel, but I'm actually selecting this flat voxel. Right? So to select the regular voxel, because it's offset completely over into the other space, I have to have my box one, other, one over. It makes them tremendously um, mind-bending to work with, but they're worth it, because as you can see, this is a regular voxel that has four positions in the green axis and four positions in the red axis, meaning I can do stuff like this. And you get curves and stuff that I couldn't get. Not only are they curved, it's also offset. Where you get the cool stuff. So let's make a flat one that you can use like, like on the ground, like this but that's skinny, because that's that's fat, and we don't... And then what use is that? It just looks like you put paint on the floor, you know, who cares? So, this is a trick from Zulji, uh, and really it's just a principle how to apply the smooth tool. I'm just going to make a line of these, like seven in a row, is that seven? I can't count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, yes. Okay, now I'm going to select the middle five, Remember, since it's offset, I've got to actually have my selection box in the neighboring space. I'm going to move my box down. I'm going to smooth it, and it's going to vanish. And so I probably want to mark the ground where my selection box is, and remember how high it is in there. Okay, so I'm 13 in there. Ugh, I hate how the lighting changes in the water. It's like, I'm not underwater. It doesn't need to be blue. And it also is, I'm having trouble targeting. Helps if I actually click the texture. Okay, so I don't want to select the top one and the bottom one because they're going to keep my shape from getting distorted. Uh, no, Crane, you're not late. This is actually something I'm going to, I'm doing it to record it. I'm not doing it to like stream it so people can interact, but I'm just like doing this so you can watch it if you want to instead of watching it after the fact. And if I miss anything, you know, or if I mess up really bad, you can laugh at me. No, I didn't, because I haven't messed with that yet. Uh, okay, so I'm going to shrink it with Smooth Tool. It's going to vanish. <gasps> oh, no! But it's still there, because as we know, nothing ever disappears. It just becomes invisible and distorted. So I'm going to take Voxel Putty and put it in the space where the voxel was. And as you see, I'm pasting it in to the selection box with air. And it's shrunk a little bit on either side. So I'm going to do it again. And you just keep doing this till you get the thinness that you want. And every time it disappears, you put more putty in, and it'll come back thinner and thinner. And you can eventually get it. I, I didn't really make it as like super duper thin, but there there literally is no limit. And these shapes will be offset and thin, so you can put them flat on the floor without deformation. But of course they'll cause deformation on anything that sits on them because they're not really there, if that makes sense. And it it will when you play with them. When you start, you know, moving them around putting things on top of them, you'll see what I mean. It's it's easier to see when you play with it. And that's not lined up, I can tell. should really learn to line stuff up over the ground and then move it up. But you think I'd know better by now. I don't know how long I've been playing this game. And every time I want it to get small, I just go fill my selection box up again. Because that marks where the air was that disappeared. You see it getting thinner and thinner, and it's getting distorted up top. 
And what this trick does is it keeps it from bowing in too much and like vanishing at the ends. So it's shrinking it inward this way. And it was already flat this way. That's why it vanishes. And this is tedious to do, but think of it this way as you're doing it. You just go through and you, you save each segment of thickness and you make your own little palette. And that way you'll just have it like you'll have a, a flat voxel palette or whatever. Let me just take out of the middle so you can see. Okay, so this shape is offset as well. So if I mirror on the blue axis, you know, you see I've got two positions. It's not offset in any other direction. Hey, flaming cowhead. So I can put it flat on the ground, and I've got microvoxel thin stuff. no deformation. And that's because it's sitting on the outside of the voxel selection box, like right, right, right on the border there. If I offset it so it's up on the green, it's going to do that. It's going to pull everything all the way up. So you can do this to do, um, I, I made a picture, and it's hard to tell what's going on, but I made a picture of a, a one voxel sized box. And what I did there was kind of a trick. Let's see if I can do it, because it's still really hard to line up. You just have to know where the axis is, and if you've ever messed with like the spirals and stuff like that, uh, it, it took me a long time to get that set up. Like, so long that Domino tweeted, oh, I just did this, and I'm like, Man, I just showed you how to do that, and so she kind of scooped me on my discovery. Okay, so there I have them sitting next to each other without deforming, and that's because this is on that side of a voxel. It's like actually a voxel down and sitting on the top, and this is in that voxel space to that direction. So if you if you do the same thing uh, all the way around and just with some experimentation, you can get some voxel-sized boxes and actually wrap this around a regular voxel and get like uh, four different colors on the outside of a voxel. Um, by rain, it doesn't matter. You just do it till it disappears. Doesn't matter if you use full size smooth or step smooth. You just want it to vanish, and they both do the same thing actually. So it doesn't matter at all. And this is, you know, where having the mirror is actually kind of handy. So I don't want it to do that. I want to trick it into looking like a full box. There we go. And it just takes some playing around with, and eventually you'll get it to where you can make a full voxel-sized box like this. But if I put anything on the outside, uh, it will pull up because those are all, you know, offset to that side. So once I do that, you know, bam, it distorts. So it's kind of a gimmick more than anything else, you know, just to show this is what you can do with it of the many, many things. And there I've just wrapped a regular voxel with four sides, and you can paint them all different colors, because they're all four different voxels, with a single different voxel in between. And they're tremendously difficult to paint, because you're, you, you think you're painting one side and you're actually painting it, you know, your, your box is like, selection box will be in the air, 